All right, now for some good news. <laughs> Because in spite of the shenanigans that Elizabeth Warren pulled this week, Bernie Sanders still managed to have a fantastic week. And I think that part of this actually does have to do with Elizabeth Warren's smear, because after that first debate, Bernie Sanders managed to raise $4 million in just two days, with a total of 200 contributions, 25,000 new donors, and on top of that, a new poll found that he's actually doing the best against Donald Trump in Florida. Currently, he's closing the gap in Nevada. A Reuters Ipsos poll found that he's closing the gap nationally between him and Joe Biden. He's just endorsed by Progressive Representative Mark Pocan, as well as the Clark County Black Caucus in Nevada. And as of right now, understand that he has the best chance of winning. We don't necessarily know how Elizabeth Warren's drama is going to impact his chances, but as of now, we have no reason to be down. And someone who I typically don't respect at all, Chris Matthews of MSNBC, you've got to give him credit because even he admits Bernie does in fact have the best shot. And I want to play that clip for you because this is someone who is no fan of Bernie Sanders. In fact, he's indicated multiple times that he hates Bernie Sanders. But he admits in this clip, Bernie's the one to beat in Iowa. Take a look. Up next, why Bernie Sanders is the candidate to beat, I think, in Iowa and New Hampshire. I've watched it. I was out there last night. I think I know what's going on out there. It may not be what you want, but I think it's what's going to happen. Bernie, out there. You're watching Hardball. Six candidates took the stage last night for the seventh Democratic debate. And let me leave you with my assessment of why Bernie Sanders is the candidate to beat in Iowa. One, his strong anti-war position. He was against the war in Vietnam. He was against the Iraq war. He's anti-war in his bones. And again last night, he let the world know it. Two, I checked the numbers. Two-thirds of the Democratic Iowa caucus voters in 2016 called themselves liberal or very liberal. Bernie swept those very liberal caucus goers in 2016 and should do it again in 2020. And this explains why Elizabeth Warren is battling with Bernie. She's trying to get the very votes that he has gotten before. Between the two of them, it's a zero-sum battle. Joe Biden, who is contending for that one third of the caucus goers who call themselves moderate or conservatives, can't match Bernie's potential. The arithmetic is simply not there. He's battling with Buttigieg and Klobuchar for that third of the vote. So bet on Bernie in Iowa. Bet on Bernie in Iowa. It feels really good to hear an MSNBC host say that. And this may be unprecedented because I don't think these words have ever come out of my mouth throughout the history of the Humanist Report. But good job, Chris Matthews. <laughs> and look, I'm not commending him because he's confirming my bias and telling me what I want to hear. I'm commending him for his objectivity because that is what we look for in journalists. Like for me, even though you all know what my biases are, you know that I support Bernie Sanders, I still go out of my way to be objective, right? Because the truth matters, the objective truth matters. So even if I'm supporting Bernie Sanders, I admit that the worst person in the race, Joe Biden, is his biggest competition with a solid shot at the nomination. So we have to admit what is objectively true, and you just got to give an MSNBC host credit for that, knowing that, you know, there could be this bandwagon effect and just admitting that Bernie could win or is the best bet in Iowa, you know, could influence your viewers to support him. Credit where it's due. That's all I'll say. Now, in terms of his arithmetic, um, it's really interesting. I think he makes a really solid case as to why Bernie Sanders will win. And we'll talk a little bit more about numbers in a second here. But he claims that Bernie Sanders has the progressive vote on lock. That vote will not go to Elizabeth Warren, whereas Joe Biden is competing with Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg in that centrist space. And that's interesting. But I will say that Amy Klobuchar, all of her supporters, assuming that she doesn't reach 15%, are going to have to coalesce behind, I'm assuming, Joe Biden or Pete Buttigieg. I can't imagine that they would support Bernie Sanders and even Elizabeth Warren. Um, but... I will say this, as much as we shit on Pete Buttigieg because he's a terrible human being and probably a sociopath, even though I shouldn't psychoanalyze and I can't confirm that, but he's just, he's not great. <laughs> um, without him, I think that Joe Biden would be coasting through this nomination because you have a huge chunk of that centrist vote being taken from Joe Biden by Pete Buttigieg. And without Pete Buttigieg, 
Joe Biden would probably be a lot stronger. But I do want to look at overall public opinion polls when it comes to the state of Iowa, because Joe Biden currently overall is narrowly in the lead. It's within, you know, less than one point. Of course, that's the margin of error. They are statistically tied and it could go either way. Joe Biden could still win. But I do believe that Bernie Sanders has a good shot because the Des Moines Register poll is one that I really do trust and a lot of people trust, hence why people in mainstream media were freaking out once that poll was released and MSNBC actually questioned its legitimacy in a segment. I'm not joking about that, by the way. I think that either uh, David Dole or David Pakman, one of the Davids covered that. Um, so check that out. I'm blanking. I, I apologize to both of them. But um, look, when MSNBC has that level of cognitive dissonance when they're trying to question the merits of a poll openly that is well respected, you know they're freaking out. So aggregate polling data basically says it's anyone's game between Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Pete Buttigieg with Elizabeth Warren not too far behind Buttigieg, but nonetheless not as close as everyone else. Um, but let me tell you this. So back in 2016, aggregate polling data showed that Hillary Clinton had four points on Bernie Sanders, but guess what happened? Bernie Sanders overperformed the polls, and he ended up outperforming so much that she only beat him by 0.2%. Aggregate polling now shows that they're neck and neck, and if he outperforms the polls again, if he truly did execute his strategy of bringing new voters in the, into the process, then I think that it's not unreasonable to assume that he will once again outperform the polls and remember that back in 2016 Hillary Clinton had no other centrist that she was competing for that space with Joe Biden does have to compete with Amy Klobuchar MP and P Buttigieg for that centrist space and seeing that progressives have coalesced around Bernie Sanders you know he may have to compete with Elizabeth Warren for that space but I don't think he'll be competing as much for that progressive space as Joe Biden will be competing for that centrist space. So let me just tell you this. We can win this. We absolutely can win this. And I always worry that when I say that, a lot of people will take away, oh, well, that means I can just sit back. And I know that you guys are smarter than that. But a lot of people, it's just, it's really easy to become complacent, right? Especially when you have your own issues to deal with. But understand that whenever I tell you Bernie Sanders is doing better, he becomes more vulnerable. We've all seen that play out this week, right? With the Des Moines Register poll and all of a sudden he's getting these attacks from his biggest ally in the field. It's going to get even dirtier possibly. We have to be prepared for absolutely anything. Hope for the best, but prepare for the worst in terms of the attacks. So whenever he does better, we have to push harder because the establishment it's not going to just let him walk to the nomination. They're going to fight him with everything they got. We got a little bit of a taste of that this week with Elizabeth Warren's bullshit. So um, I'll leave that there. We have a shot at this. We just have to push that much harder.